Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting, there goes Santa, and I'm sipping on my French vanilla coffee. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are Mars Black, Purple Violet, Titanium White, Green Oxide, Fire Red, Burnt Umber, which I like to call brown, and Cobalt Blue. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number five round synthetic brush, and I have a number zero round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using black paint. As I go through this process, I'm not gonna be doing any fancy brush stroke because black covers really easily. So what I'll do is I like to kind of go around the edges to make sure I've got them completely painted. And then I'll come back in towards that center and make the center nice and painted. You can also, uh, when you're using a nice solid color like this, or any color for that matter, in this beginning phase, you can paint the edges or the sides of your canvas. That will make your painting and your project look nice and professional and fully complete and like you've paid enough attention or the same amount of attention all over your project as you did in the front part of it. So I like to give myself a nice even type of layer of paint when work, I like to use a student grade paint, which is a thin bodied paint and it has a tendency to self level right onto the canvas as it's drying. But if you're using a thicker body paint and you have a tendency to get um, almost like lumps and bumps in that paint as it's drying, what I suggest doing is when you, after you get the entire painting covered with that particular layer, what you can do is you just go back and forth, left to right. This will give you a nice level layer of paint it also helps to make sure that you've covered the entire canvas. And then we will be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be finishing our sky not the moon, but the sky behind the moon and the clouds around it. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. So this is that time where you get to take an extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun drying method to get it dry. Or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be creating the illusion of an atmosphere behind my moon 
which will have some nice blue and purple tones to it. And then I want the moon to be illuminating some clouds that are just kind of drifting by in this winter sky. I'm going to be placing my moon somewhere up in this vicinity. So that's where I'm going to start my color for my sky. And then I'll just put some nice clouds kind of um, draping or surrounding it. I'm going to start with blue, but I'm also going to pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint. And I'm showing this to you because I want to show you how little I'm picking up. I'm just picking up a teeny tiny dot on the corner of my brush. The white can really take over. The reason I'm using this teeny tiny dot is so I add a little bit of opacity to my blue. But because the blue is on a black surface, it will end up very, very dark, but I want it to be visible. So this teeny tiny dot of white paint will help me to do that. So I'm going to have my moon somewhere in through here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to be using this circular type of brush stroke, which is going to give me this nice, soft, atmospheric um, kind of glow around where I want my, my moon to go. And then once I've got this pretty large area. I'm a little bit further than halfway over to the right. I'm, you know, a couple inches away from the top of my canvas. I'm allowing myself to just kind of let myself run out of paint. I go back in that center area just to make sure it's as soft as I want it to do, as I want it to be. And then what I'm going to, and when I'm doing this soft center, I have hardly any pressure on my brush. So I'm, I'm really just hardly touching my brush in order to soften that out. Now, without washing my brush, I'm going to pick up purple violet. So this is going to give me an even more kind of in-depth type of winter feel to it. I feel like I have a little bit too much paint on my brush, so I'm just wiping it off on my paper towel just so I can make sure that I control the quantity of paint. And then I'm just going to bring this kind of almost like a little halo around the blue area. And of course, you could extend yours further out. You could make yours more vibrant than mine. That's going to be a visual preference on your part. But just know it will dry a whole lot darker than it is when it's wet. So don't cast judgment on its um, final look until it's actually fully dry. So once I've got that in place, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my clouds in. I just want some drifting clouds kind of um, surrounding the bottom of my moon. So I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up blue, purple, and a teeny tiny bit of white paint. So blue, purple, and a tiny bit of white paint. And I'm just on the edge of my brush right now. I want my clouds to be, if this is about halfway down my canvas in the center, I'm right about there is where I'm kind of starting the look of them. And then I'm just going to kind of bring the, this, um, the brighter edge of them towards the moon in through there. I'm kind of using a circular brush stroke in order to give this brighter edge. I want it to go darker as it goes away from the moon. So I next time I loaded my brush, it did not pick up white paint. So this will allow it to get a little bit darker as it's going far away. And then I'm just kind of allowing myself to push my brush in like a little circular motion to get the, the tips of these clouds around in through here. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the left. So blue, purple, and a teeny tiny bit of white paint just to give myself a couple little brighter edges to the clouds over on this side and again brighter as they're closer to the moon. And I also know that I'm going to have some trees and some other atmospheric stuff around my painting that will take, that will um, give you more information and, and more um, details. But this is just providing me with a little bit of a great appearance for the clouds. I just picked up a little bit more white because I feel like I want a couple of these ones right close to the uh, moon to have a little bit more oomph in them. So I just picked up a tiny bit more white and then I will let mine dry. And if there is any additional tweaking that I want to do, I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. Um, if there's any additional, you know, parts that I want a little bit brighter or a little bit bluer, I certainly will do that. And then we're going to be using our, um, we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint a moon. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black, white, purple, and blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be drawing myself an outline for my moon with paint. You could certainly be drawing an outline with a pencil. You could use any kind of aid that you'd like, like a little Tupperware cover or, you know, some round circular object to make sure that it's nice and um, circular. I'm going to just cross my fingers and hope mine's circular. <laughs> no, I'll give myself a couple of points. I'll give the same to you and then we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, but I'm going to have mine in through here. It's going to be about four inches wide by four inches tall. You could certainly have yours bigger or smaller. Whatever you'd like to do is up to you. What I'm going to first do is I'm going to put a little bit of black and white and water on my brush. So what I'm doing is I'm creating, I have black and white with a little bit of water. What I do for the water is I will dip my brush in my water and then I tap it off on my paper towel. So this way I have a lot of moisture within my bristles, but I have um, a little bit of paint, not too bright, because I use the black and the white and it'll allow me to get kind of a nice clean edge to my circle. So I'm going to find myself about the halfway point on the top of my canvas, which is around here. And then I'm going to come down, I would say about four inches and over to the left, about a half of an inch to an inch. Somewhere in through here is going to be my first marker. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about four inches to the left of that, give myself a, another marker. And then what you can do is come back to the center of your of these two lines and then go about two inches below and about two inches above. And I might be a little bit off and you could even go about, you could make yourself as many dots around your circle as you want to help kind of aid you in um, creating a circle. So now that I've got that, I'm just going to connect my dots and my dots look like they're not perfect, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go more by my sight than my dots at this point. I feel like I need this corner to be rounded out a little bit more. The only trick, or I would say most difficult part about doing these four initial dots is probably what just happened to me. I put these other dots a little bit too far in, which would almost create um, a, like a flat side to to my circle. So just make sure you, you round these edges so they, they take on the appearance of a circle and not like a, a line like that, which I would tend to um, do accidentally. And of course, another quick method to drawing a circle is you can take a little bit of like a piece of string and hold it in the center and then kind of pull it out to the edge and draw yourself a circle around that way. So there's lots of methods to, to drawing um, something that resembles a circle. So you can certainly explore those. So now that I've got something that resembles a pretty good circle to me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting it in. I'm picking up a little bit more white and black without washing my brush. And I'm going to be applying this in kind of a circular type of brush stroke. I'm doing it this way in order to provide me the illusion of little pits and craters on the moon. I don't want my moon to go too, too bright, so that's why I'm going to incorporate these other colors. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel, and I'm picking up a little bit more white paint right now because I do want some areas to be pretty darn bright on my moon, um, but I don't want it to be... 100% white. So I'm just using the white right now and spinning it around so I've got these um, circular type of uh, mark. I guess m marks is a good word for it. I don't want them to necessarily look like s circles per se, but what it's doing is it's giving me these softer um, uh, curved edges to my marks so that way it, they look more um, like the top, like the the ground on the on the moon's surface, as opposed to just uh, jagged mountains or anything like that. So I'm just giving it a softer appearance. I'm enhancing my outline right now, so I can actually see it on top of my black. It was it was fading a little bit too um, too much into my background because I had used so much water on that initial go around, which is fine. That 
that water just helped me to stay in my safe zone <laughs> as I was creating that, that outline. And now I'm just um, blending in my outline with the interior of my moon. And again, I'm just kind of using this little circular type of brush stroke. I don't want that outline to be too dramatic. And then once you've got a pretty good representation of kind of a grayscale type of moon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding the, the little blues and purples to it. So this is looking pretty good for me. I'm going to just pick up a tiny bit of my cobalt blue right now. And I don't need a lot, just a little tiny bit on my dirty brush to get my to get my moon to have a couple of different shades of colors in it. I just picked up some purple and doing the same thing, just using my brush in this circular type of brush stroke. I might have to, you know, clean up my edges a little bit because I see I went outside the, the lines a little bit in through there, but that's part of my process, so I'm okay with, with that. I just picked up a little bit more purple. I feel like I want a little bit more in through here, and I feel like I want this left top left side to be a little bit darker, so I just picked up a little bit more black on my brush. So at this point, what I would be doing is I am alternating back and forth between white, purple, blue, and black in order to get a nice diversity in my moon. I definitely want to have right around here the brightest because that's where I'm going to be putting my Santa and my, and my Santa sleigh going through the sky. And the brighter that moon is right behind where we put him and the, the reindeer, the more you'll be able to see him from a distance in the, in the painting. So I'm just making sure that I've got that elevated as much as I want. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So I would just kind of keep fiddling with this, making, you know, make your edges brighter if you want them to be, soften the, the edges around. You can clean up any little um, areas like I'm going to have to do around the edges. And then you can put this uh, medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our trees. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm going to use are black and green. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be having two large trees kind of flanking the sides of my canvas. And then I'm just going to have the essence or the illusion of maybe some tops of bushes or trees down in through here. I'm not going for anything other than something to fill in my canvas and to make it feel like my um, my two people are outdoors. So I, I want to have that just kind of wintry type of evergreen tree. You could certainly do whatever type that you'd like. I'm going to be using green and black on my brush to start at the same time. And then every time I go to reload my brush, I will alternate those colors, green one time, black another time. First, I'm going to put my tree trunks or my tree markers in place. So I'm going to have this one going almost all the way up to the top of my canvas, somewhere in through here. I'm just going to kind of give myself a line going down so I know where I want that one to go. And then this one over on the right-hand side is just going right down the side of my canvas like that. And then I'm just going to have some bushes in through there. I'm going to be uh, making these look like evergreen trees, or at least these two side ones, which to me... Uh, uh, the typical evergreen tree, pine tree, kind of looks like a triangle type shape. So I'm going to be pulling out these little branches kind of down and out towards um, the sides and they're going to get longer and longer as they come down the canvas. So I'm just going to kind of, you can dab it, you can pull it, you can really um, use a variety of different brush strokes. I just picked up black for my next reload on my brush so that way I've got some light spots and dark spots. As I'm coming down here I know I need more green so you can see it on top of that black. So I'm going to just kind of bring these down and through here. There's a couple different methods. You can either just kind of dot it like this where you'll get more more of a speckly look, or you can pull it like this and then bring down these cute little, um, like pine needle type of looks. So whatever works for you, I think I'm going to do this down method for this one. I do that dotting one a lot, so I feel like I want to give this one a little bit more of a variety, so I'm going to just kind of be pulling almost like a diagonal line and then pulling some of those some of those needles down and that looks pretty good. I don't need to do a lot of it because again, this is going to be in the silhouette. It's going to be um, 
shadowed by or um, only illuminated by the moon a little bit so I don't need much on this at all. I'm going to go do the one on the other side as well. So again I'm starting with green and black on my brush kind of just giving myself some some branches like this and then just pulling down these neat little um, pine needles. Again, just to give it a little bit different of a look, you can certainly have whatever type of style that you want. I'm going to pick up uh, just green on this uh, pass. This one's going to be hidden a lot by our, our people, so you don't really need to do a, a whole heck of a lot on this side because, again, it's going to be hidden by our people. I think I want this to be out just a little bit further though so I don't have any dead space up um, up top in through here. So I just pull that out just a little bit more. And again, just pulling these down just a bit. And then I'm gonna do maybe just the essence of a couple down here at the bottom. Again, my people are here so I'm really just looking to fill in some space with some similar color. Just kind of dabbing this in a way where I can just maybe get the illusion of some treetops and stuff in through there. And that's all I'm going to do. We're going to use our um, small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can uh, put your large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to be painting Santa and his reindeer flying through the air. I'm going to be using my small brush. The color I'm going to use is black. I'm just going to put him in the silhouette here, um, and he's going to be very tiny. So what I'm going to do so I can control my paint and make sure I have a nice um, slender line when I, go to, when I go to paint on here is I'm going to be using this tiny brush, but I'm going to put a little bit of water in my black paint. So what I'm doing is I'm thinning it out so it's almost like an ink consistency. This will allow me to have really thin lines and keep control as to what I'm doing. Even if I make it too transparent where it dries a little bit lighter than I had anticipated, I can always put another layer on, but keeping it nice and fluid like this is going to allow me um, to get some nice small lines like the reins for the reindeer. I'm going to want those to be really small, so I'm going to thin out my paint here. So I'm going to start with my um, Santa sleigh. I'm going to have uh, his sleigh in through here, and I'm going to have my reindeer just kind of flying through the air over and through there. So I wanted to have a little bit of movement and kind of like an upward type of a, of, of a motion to it. So I'm going to start right right about here and I'm going to give myself this kind of scrolly bottom to the um, to the sleigh so when he lands wherever he needs to land he's got he's got a good good structure to land on <laughs> then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the um, the sled part of it so I'm going to start a little bit up and through here I'm really just going to do some um, some fun basic shapes. You could certainly make yours as fancy as you want to. I'm just going to make mine in in a way that that in my head resembles Santa's sleigh, but you can certainly make yours whatever way you Oh, right now it kind of looks like an ice skate. <laughs> I didn't plan for it to look like an ice skate, but it kind of looks like an ice skate right now. So that's good. You could start with the shape of an ice skate. <laughs> then I'm going to put a couple of little lines to connect the sled to the um, the skis on the sled or the uh, tracks or I'm not quite sure what they're called. So I'm going to just make a couple of little lines connecting these two pieces in through there. I need to make a big sack in the back of the sleigh to represent all the presents that Santa Claus is delivering. So I'm going to put a big sack back in through here and to make it look like it's a little bit of a sack I'll put a little kind of buckled up part at the top. We want it to look nice and big and like there's lots of presents in through there. Now I gotta make my Santa. So all I'm gonna do for Santa is I'm gonna give him a, um, a a body that I'm gonna try and get it to lean forward a little bit <laughs> like he's he's you know going up hill with his his reindeer so I'm gonna put him somewhere in through here maybe he's got a big kind of jolly belly too in through there I'm gonna put a little head on him so something like this in through here he definitely has to have a Santa hat on so I'm gonna put a little Santa hat 
kind of coming off here with a little bump on the end. And that looks like Santa. Maybe he needs a little beard too. Or just, oh yeah, we need, we need the little beard in the front. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That looks more like Santa. And now I need his arm to um, meet the, where the reins are going to be. So I'm just going to put a couple little um, vertical lines going out like that. Maybe like that. There we go. That's all I need. I'm going to now make myself some of the reins. So I really just want kind of like a long, narrow line to um, indicate where these are going. So I'm going to start at his hands. I'm going to start here and I'm going to just kind of bring it down like this and kind of um, up, up and away <laughs> somewhere in through there. I'm going to do a second one just, you know, because I think you'd have two reins <laughs> holding these, um, these animals in the air and they don't even have to be, you know, next to each other perfectly. You can kind of twist them and shape them whatever way that you want. That looks pretty good. So now I need some reindeer. So I'm going to have four. Um, I think he has nine reindeer, two sets of two, and then Rudolph in the front, if memory serves me correctly. But I'm just going to do four, as if we're seeing it really just from the silhouette. Um, but that's the way I'm going to do mine. So I'm going to put four oval type of shapes um, that are going to represent the bodies of my, of my reindeer. So there's one. I just keep reloading my brush so I can have control here. And I'm going to, you can put them at an angle. You can put them, you know, really straight. Actually, I think I'm going to need to extend my, my, um, my reins a little bit too, because I'm running out of room here. So that's three. And then we'll put a fourth one in through here. I got to extend my reins a little bit, which is fine. <laughs> um, but you can, you, of course, you could make as many as you want. Let me just connect these guys here with, with the little rope of sorts or the rain. So once you've got the oval type of shape and you can see I crossed it over the, um, the reins, I got to put some legs. My legs, I want them to look like they're in motion. So, and again, you could just have the one on the front and one on the back, but if you're feeling fancy and you're feeling comfortable, you can put two on the front. I'm just going to kind of give these little, um, diagonal kind of, um, uh, angled lines like that and then the back ones are going to kind of be a little bit thicker with the thigh and then they just kind of come down like that so again you could put two in the front two in the back or one and one depending on if you want to see these exactly from um directly from the side view or whatnot and then i'll just go ahead and do that for the rest of them and they don't all have to be at the same angle either some of these deer might be um you know in a little bit, maybe these front legs are move, are more forward than those ones were. So feel free to um, make it into whatever you want. Maybe his back legs are are farther stretched out. So you can whatever you have room for and you're comfortable with, feel free to to execute. Um, it, they are super tiny, so you don't need a lot of detail. Now I want to put the neck and head on. So the necks are going to be kind of. Um, large in comparison with the body and then I just make a, a little um, kind of bump out for for the muzzle something like that and I'll do that to all of them so I put the neck on and again I want it to kind of look like it's they're going that way so I don't want this to be too um, straight up in the air but that's looking pretty good and I'll do the other two in through here just getting, and again, if, you, if they can be at slightly different angles from one another, that's going to make it look a little bit more natural. But again, we're just doing teeny tiny ones, so we don't need it to be perfect. This one, I think I want this one to go even further forward like that and like that. And then I just need some antlers. So my antlers, just have fun with it. Just bring up some nice slender lines. You can, again, put one or two on there, however um, however many you can get in there that works well for you. And when you get done this, if you feel that you want to add more definition or, or lighter area around your, your, um, 
reindeer to make them pop a little bit more, feel free to just pull a little bit more white into your moon or even around your Santa, but I'm thinking mine is pretty good. Ooh, they might need some tails too. If you feel that you need a tail, just pop a little, pop a little bump right on the top of their butt like that, and that'll do. And then we're gonna be using our large brush for the next step. So once you've got Santa and his reindeer all nice and done, you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our trees. So all I'm really gonna be doing here is adding the illusion of a little bit of snow in the twilight or in the night. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, white, purple, and blue. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself what I'll call a shadowy snow color. And then we'll add it on to here strategically. So it just looks like we've got a little bit of wintry snowfall resting on these trees. But again, I don't want them to be uber bright. So I'm gonna keep them in the darkness of the forest. I have pre-mixed myself my color. I will show you how I got to it using my medium brush. This is my shadowy snow color in through here. So what this is, is I, I made gray with black and white, kind of like a medium to dark gray. And then I added a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of purple violet into it. So this is gonna give me kind of like a soft muted dark bluish gray type of a color. And then what I'm gonna do, once I've got my color fixed there, I'm gonna take my large brush. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this color on the tip of it. And I want my trees to be illuminated on the side of the, the moon. So on this tree here, I'm gonna take a little bit of this color and bring it on the side of the moon. This is my shadowy color, so I can I can legitimately put this all over the tree, but I'm gonna start on this right-hand side because I feel like that's where I would have um, it the brightest, and then I'll pull a little bit onto the left-hand side. And I'm just kind of tapping it on the top of some of these branches, allowing for it to look like it's just kind of sitting on them. And then as I work my way over to the left-hand side of the tree, I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I felt like I had a little bit too much. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Just bring a little bit on the tops of some of these, bring some down that center area. We'll add a little bit of um, white in on it in a minute, but just giving my illusion of the uh, shadowy snow. I reloaded my brush with a little bit more of that same color and I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side. So just kind of tapping it on top of some of these branches and then just pulling it down just a little bit so I have a similar brush stroke to uh, the way that I started those branches. And you could, and again, I'm really not doing a whole heck of a lot here, just adding this little extra bit of um, snowy color to it and making sure that this green I see is a little bit overpowering for me. So I'm gonna dull that down with a little bit of snow as well. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll add a little bit of um, a lightness to it. So I'm gonna pick up that snow color plus a teeny tiny bit of white paint on the end of my brush just to give myself some little dabs of brightness over on the side that the that the moon is on. So again, just little, little dabs. And the, the trick here is just don't use a ton of paint on your brush. So a very little bit goes a long way. And if you, you know, want to make any of this lighter or darker, feel free to do so. I do want to add just a, a couple little tips on these guys in through here. So I hardly have any paint on my brush, just kind of dabbing the tippy top of these bushes or trees, whatever they might be down and through there. And then doing the same exercise over here on this left side. Maybe I'll put the extra lighter stuff in this mid region just so, because it, to me, maybe a little at the top too. <laughs> it seems like it should have a little bit more being the closer to, closest to the um, moon. And that's all I'm gonna do for this step. I don't need to do much. I just, again, wanna make sure that I've got everything attended to. And then I'm going to be using my piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got snow on your trees, you can put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our people. 
I'm going to be using my piece of chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. You could even use paint to, to draw your outline of them. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be guiding you through a series of markers and basic shapes. So this way we have a nice, simple outline that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. We're not going for any fine-tuned details right now, we're just going for some nice basic shapes to help us along during the painting process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, whenever I do um, something, a, a sketch such as this, I always like to kind of identify a, a main basic shape and then I build my, my, um, my other objects around that. So what we're going to first do is we're going to be creating kind of like a rectangle type of a shape to start and then we will be drawing all kinds of stuff around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself the center of the bottom of my canvas. So about halfway between the left and the right. So for me, I would say that's somewhere about here. And then I'm going to go to the right of that about two inches and give myself a little bit of a marker right down at the bottom of my canvas. Then on the bottom right hand side of my canvas, I'm going to come in about three inches and give myself a marker. I'm going to split the difference between these two and come up about, I would say, four, four and a half inches, somewhere in through here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect all of these, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect them with kind of rounded edges along the left and the right. So I'm going to bring this up in a vertical line till I'm almost at the same height as that, and then I just kind of round it around the edge, and I'll do the same thing over here. So I'm going to bring it up straight until it's almost at the same height as that, and then just round it right around the edge like that. So that's going to give us the basic kind of um, frame for the torso of our larger person. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my arm on the larger person pointing up towards the um, moon and to the exciting thing that's happening in the sky. So I'm going to have this arm coming off of this area in through here. I'm going to come in from here about an inch somewhere in through here, give myself what will be kind of the top of that shoulder. And down at the on this side over here, I'm going to come up, I would say about halfway up this um, this line in through here. This is going to be the underside of the arm going into the side of the torso. I need to figure out where I want my pointer finger to go. So for me, I'm if, if this is about the center of my canvas, I'm a little bit to the left and uh, uh, maybe about an inch and a half to the left. Well, if this is the center of my canvas, let's go straight up from here. Yeah, somewhere about here and a little bit to the left of that. So I'm right in this vicinity. Yours could be positioned a little bit differently, but that's where I was seeing it would work the best. And I'm going to have a little pointer finger in through here. So I'm just going to kind of bring this diagonal line maybe about an inch and a half down. And then on the left-hand side, I'm just going to bring this down maybe about half of that distance and then bump it out like this. So this is going to give me my hand, and then I can bring it in where I would say my, my shirt is going to go, or my jacket sleeve is going to go. And then I just need to connect here to here and here to here. So this is going to be the inside part of the, the jacket. I want it to kind of look like it's um, rippled over the wrist a little bit, so I'm going to come up from here just a little bit and bring it out and then I can kind of connect it to here with like a little wavy type of a line. It doesn't have to be super straight. You can put a little bump in it if you want to. And then I'll do the same thing over on this side. So I'll bring it up that line just a little bit and then this will be like the cuff. And then I can just kind of um, get this to blend in or kind of connect to that line and do that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a scarf on my, per on my larger person. So I'm going to take it from, I'm going to go up this line just a little bit and I'm going to give myself kind of um, like a curved line like that and then I'm going to go over to this right hand side um, just in from this shoulder area a little bit and do the same thing. Bring it up about the same height as that in through there and then I can connect these two with a little bit of a curve. Now I'm going to put a head on my um, larger person. I want it to kind of look like it's tipped back a little bit and looking up at the sky. 
So I'm going to take it from this corner in through here, and I'm going to give it kind of a, diag a diagonal line like this. I'm going to loop it around like this. So again, it's kind of at a little bit of a slant. I'm going to make him look like he's wearing... I'm, I'm assuming it's a man. <laughs> I'm, I'm in my head, this, uh, this is a dad and a son. So I'm going to have this person wearing a, a hat. So I'm going to just kind of bump it out in through there and then just bring it down uh, in, in this vicinity in through here. I don't want him to look like he's missing a face, so I'll just give a little line in through there. And then on the right-hand side, I'm going to put um, my arm of my larger person that's going to be holding the little person. <laughs> so I'm going to come up. So I'm about um, a third of the way up in through here. This line will make more sense in a minute, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an upward diagonal like that, and then I'm going to do a downward diagonal like that. I'm going to do another upward diagonal. Think of like we're doing like a little W into here. This will make sense in a minute. And then I'm going to bring this down to a curve like that. So what we just did was we just created the part of the arm that is wrapping around the little kid. You'll see. You'll see how this goes in a minute. I'm going to put my little arm uh, of my little person here. This is the elbow that we just made in through here. So this is the elbow. I'm going to bring this out like this from um, a little bit down this shoulder here. I'm going to bring this down in a diagonal and then a horizontal. Give myself a little edge to my jacket. Give myself a little mitten in through there. I'm going to take from here, give myself a little bit of a curve. This is going to go higher than this um, shoulder area in through here, so something like that. Going to go just to the right of this, maybe about, I don't know, an inch or so. Give myself a curve that's going to meet this little line in through there. I'm going to put a scarf on my little person. So I'm going to take this out to the right, a little bit like that. I'm going to come up just a little bit, bring it over in this direction, and put a big poofy scarf kind of coming around this front area. It's going to be the jacket and the scarf. You'll see how this is all going to work in a minute. And now I just need a head. So I'm going to take it from in through here. I'm going to give a similar head to this one, only it's not going to be so tip back so far. So something like this, I'm going to bring around in through here. And then this one, I'm probably not going to see uh, the face, so I'm just, like it's wearing a hood. Like this little person's wearing a hood, and that hood part is covering the whole face. So what now? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, my small brush, which seems to have been relocated. Hold on a second. I'm going to take my or my medium brush and put a little bit of water on it, so I can erase a couple of these guidelines, so they don't confuse me during the painting in process. So I took my medium brush. I want to erase this line right in through here. This is just water on my brush. I want to erase this line right in through here. And I want to erase this line right in through here. And that's all I'm going to be doing for my outline. You can make any little fiddling adjustments that you want. Make sure your finger is pointed up in the right direction. I might actually turn mine just a little bit so it's pointing right up at my Santa and then we're going to be using this medium brush for the next step so you can just take a break and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our clothing. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm going to use are brown and white and if I need a little black I'll use a little black. What I'm in essence going to be doing, oh yes, I'm definitely going to use black because I'm going to need, need the black to cover this area in through here. So what I'm in essence going to be doing is creating a gray scale type of appearance for my people and then I'm going to be adding color on top of that. So this way, this gives you all kinds of options as far as your colors go. You can really just start by um, using this gray scale type of method and then adding colors on top of it. And this will help to accentuate all of your contours and your shadows and things of that nature. And then you can just build your way to the color. So I'm going to pre-mix myself just a, um, like a tan type of a color 
to with brown and white and this will this is so I don't make it too light or too dark it'll just give me something right in the middle that'll help me to guide my way through all of these contours and the the shapes of the of the clothing I'm just going to start right up in through here I want to identify where I want my sleeve to go so I'm putting this lighter lighter color on in through here I know that I have my light source is the moon, so everything kind of on this um, that's on the side towards the moon would be the lightest and the brightest, but I don't need it to go all the way white. I'm really just kind of taking this light color. I've got a shoulder in through here, so I'm going to take and put a little bit of lightness in through here. What I'm in essence doing is just kind of adding these lighter areas. I'll be using black in a minute as well, but I'm just kind of um, identifying where I want all of my objects to go. I'm uh, getting my my chalk mark to go away. I think I want this line, this is going to be the scarf. I want this to kind of come down this back side a little bit more. I am going to pick up some black now so I can get this area covered um, where the clouds are. I did not wash my brush so I just picked up black in order to um, get this area covered and because I have that tan or brown still on my brush I'm going to get some good variation in my colors and through here I uh, when I go down in, in this vicinity where it's really dark because of the um, background I'm definitely going to be using a little bit of that tan on my brush as well so I'm going to be um, flip-flopping between or using in conjunction with one another the black and that tan in order to give myself this full coat on the coat, <laughs> this full coverage on the coat in order for it to um, be able to be on top of that background. You can see as I just, I kind of pushed my brush a little bit harder, which released a little bit more of that tan color that I had on there. And this is going to allow my, um, the color that I put on it later on to have a little bit more substance to it as opposed to it just going on that black uh, base. I'm going to put black on my, on my glove in through here, making sure that that kind of goes right into that sleeve. So this is just, I'm going to, uh, color the majority of this black. I think I'll put a little bit of the highlight on as well or a little bit of that tan but just getting the shape on in through here covering up my my chalk marks and if you don't cover up all your chalk marks what you can do is just take a little bit of water on a brush after you complete after you complete the step you can take a little bit of water on your brush and get rid of those um, little et chalk edges that might still be might still be visible. I think I'm gonna um, wipe my brush off and pick up a little bit of that tan just so I can re-identify that little tip in through there. And I'm also in a second gonna put a little bit on the um, hand part, like right in where those knuckles would be. So I'm picking up a little bit of that tan, putting a little bit on here. My black is still wet, so I'm okay with that. I just am looking to get a little bit of a highlight going in through there. I don't need to do much. I know I can accentuate this when I um, when I work out the, the color details in a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. Just make sure I've got this colored in as much as I want. And then I'm going to go ahead. I need to finish his jacket, so I'm going to pick up black plus a little bit of that tan. I don't want to go all the way um, black or light back here because I want there to be uh, make it look like it's in the shadow. Uh, but I do want there to be something on there that's going to cover up any of the evidence of the tree that was behind there and also give me a little bit lighter base to work from than just black. Um, so that's why I'm using black plus that tan color. This is all arm down in through here, all arm of the arm and back of my adult. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got all of that colored in right up to my little person's sleeve and if I wanted to add a little bit more bulk to the um, jacket I can just pick up a little bit more light that tan and just give a little bit lighter area in any anywhere you feel that it would bump out a little bit more like around this shoulder the poofier it is as a winter coat the more comfy it's gonna <laughs> look the more it's gonna have some you know warmth 
to it. So just make it as it, the lighter parts are going to pop out the most. So you can make it as, as light as you want in as many places as you want. And that's looking pretty good. And I just need to get this little arm down in through here. So the little arm over here. So making sure that I hit my, my chalk mark and just get this all colored in, in through here. So again, this is his, his, uh, the adult arm in through here and coming down like this. So you could imagine his shoulders right here and this is just the outside of that arm holding on to this little person. I'm gonna do the same thing with the hat. So I'm putting a little bit of that tan um, on my brush. I'm gonna start over here on this left-hand side to give it a little bit more brightness over on the left hand side. And then I'm just rubbing it towards the right, which is gonna be, to me, the dark side of the head, but I want it to look like there's a little bit more volume in here. So that's where I would make sure that I have a good amount of the lightness in order to get it to look like it's bumping out. I want a tiny bit of this lightness on the edge of um, this little face in through there, and I'm just going for a little silhouette, so I don't need to do anything fancy there, just, actually, I'm gonna pick up a little bit more black. I feel like I made that too light in through there, so I just picked up a little bit more black to get that to disappear. Um, and I'm gonna have this, this bottom side of the hat pretty dark, so I just picked up more black in through here. The back side of this scarf can stay pretty dark, but I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the tan for over here, just on this edge, just to, because maybe that's a little illuminated by the, um, by the moon in the sky. Just making sure I've got my edges in through here. And again, a little bit of water on your brush will take care of any of that exterior little chalk. Plus we've got another step coming with color. So that'll help to accentuate any of that just amping up this little edge over here make that a little bit brighter make it look like a nice fluffy hat and so i'm going to do the same thing for my little person here i've got my i need to make a little more tan i didn't make enough so making more on the fly here so i'm picking up my tan i'm going to approach it the same way just light on this left and then i'll go dark as it goes towards the right so i'm just putting a little bit of light on the those pieces of the hood or the um or the scarf that are nearing nearest to the light source i need a little bit on whatever the jacket is in through here as well and maybe just a little bit on this shoulder also because that would probably catch it and then i'm gonna uh, pick up a little bit of black on my dirty brush just to get this to blend out and over towards this right hand side and as i go through this if I, if I want it to be lighter or darker, I can certainly um, adjust the value. What, that's exactly what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm playing with the tonal values of the paint. So when I go to put that color on, this is allowing me to have all of that stuff worked out. I might end up adding a little bit more for um, a, a super bright highlight in the end on the um, on top of the color, but this helps me to work out all of my um, my tonal values as I go through this gradated um, kind of monochromatic process. And it also allows me to ensure that I'm going to have the dimensional element to my um, to my painting. Because sometimes when we're just working with color and not um, we just want to put the color on. Sometimes we make it look a little bit flatter and forget about these these uh, these gradations and that that help to uh, talk about the form on these objects. So by doing an exercise like this, where you're just doing kind of a grayscale first, it forces you to to make sure that you are using your full value scale or enough of it to show the um, the form and the dimension for those particular objects. I just picked up more black and as I'm going through this process again I'm flipping back and forth between my black and my tan in order to get it to go lighter in certain areas and darker in others just so I can get these uh, pieces to uh, separate from one another. 
So like now I just picked up a little bit of that tan with the remnants of my black on my brush and I haven't washed my brush. I just keep flipping back and forth between these two colors in order to get um, it to go light to dark. And again, I don't need it to be anything perfect right now. I'm just uh, working with these values so I can make sure that I have a great base to put some color on. And then once you've got this done, I would definitely wait for it to dry, see if there's any little fiddling that you want to do. And then we're going to be using this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna add color to our people. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are predominantly red, green, and blue. And I'll probably end up using a little white and maybe a little bit of my tan. If I need to dip into black, I certainly will, but I'll call all the colors out as I use them. Um, I'm going to first colorize my my larger person, I thought it'd be pretty cool to give him a Christmas colored jacket. So he's getting a red and green type of jacket. I'm going to be alternating between red and green on my brush at the same time. And I'm going to be allowing myself to use this paint in a transparent way, which means I don't need a lot on my brush and I'm allowing it to be, I'm kind of scrubbing it on, so it's allowing it to see the colors underneath. So I just picked up green this time. I wanted it to, his coat to look maybe like it's got some, like a knitted type of quality to it where there's multiple colors, but you can certainly, you know, make yours into whatever you want. I'm picking up red now, so maybe I've got a little red area up in through here. And it may appear to be a little bright as while it's wet, but when it dries, it will take on those values of the paint underneath. And again, because I'm not using any, um, I'm not using any white in my equation with my green and my red, what's happening is I use a thin bodied student grade paint, which is usually pretty transparent. It doesn't have a great pigment to it. So I can layer in a, in a lovely way <laughs> that allows me to continue to add these great layers right on top of each other and they see the, the stuff that's underneath them. So I dig this paint for that particular reason. I dig it for a lot of reasons, but that's one specific reason that I do. And I just keep alternating right now between red and green. Right now I've got them both on my brush at the same time. I wanna make sure that this arm looks the way that I want it to. So I got a little highlight in through here and then I'm gonna have a little shadow. I'm gonna move my canvas so I can get to the back side of his arm. There we go, something like this. And your jacket might come out redder than mine or greener than mine, or maybe you just want it to be one or the other. That's totally up to you. I just thought it'd be kind of neat to have this two-tone to it. I'm gonna do the same thing on the sleeve. So red and green is gonna get me started up in through here, maybe right on here. And you're gonna notice where I have the lighter paint underneath, that's where it's gonna dry, these colors are gonna dry lighter. So I had it dark down here, it's gonna dry really dark underneath, um, underneath that paint there. Same thing with over here. So wherever your paint was darker underneath, that's where it's going to dry darker when you put this um, thinned out paint on top. And if you're working with a, a thicker paint than I'm working with, you can always use um, either water and or a liquid medium to thin it out so you get this transparency to it. And through here, I feel like I want to have kind of the edge of a, a, a cuff of a sleeve. I'm picking up a touch of black right now just to give myself a little wrinkle in the, um, in the jacket over on this side just to of course, feed my painterly eye, <laughs> maybe a little wrinkle in through there. So you can, you know, pick up the darkness anytime you want to um, make any little wrinkles or anything like that more apparent. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go up to that glove now with, uh, I washed and dried my brush. I put some red on my glove or red on my paint <laughs> in order to get this glove 
to uh, or mitten, whatever you want to uh, make yours into to get that on there. And of course, again, like I said, yours doesn't have to be the same color as mine. If you don't want to go for a red mitten, you want to go for something else because you, because your dad wore a certain color cloth, feel free to do so. I'm actually going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint right now while I'm in this area because I feel I want this edge to be just a little bit lighter because it's so close to that to that moon, I gotta make sure my brush is pointed. I got some some liquid in my brush, so it is splaying on me a little bit. There we go. That works out better. I'm also gonna uh, put a little darkness. I'm picking up a tiny bit of black paint. I'm gonna put a little bit in this cuff area in through here, so I can shape that cuff the way that I want to. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint now to give myself just a little. A little bright edge over in through here. There we go. That that works out. So as I'm going through this, I'm saying, "Oh, this is close to the to the um, light source." So I want to amp it up a little bit. So I, if if my value underneath wasn't light enough and wasn't bringing it as light as I want, I can always amp it up. I can always add more to it. So to get it to that lighter region, if I if I desire it to be there. So that's looking pretty good. Then I'm going to um, move on to my to my scarf that he's got. So I'm washing and drying my brush just in case I had something that I didn't want on there. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my um, red and green. And I'm just going to kind of pull this in a vertical type of way. I think I'm going to put some fun markings on this uh, on this scarf. But first, I'm just kind of getting my color on here in this fun vertical way. If you want to do something neat, like make it look like it's plaid or something like that, you can make these crisscross type of marks. I just put some red on my brush, and I'm going to just kind of make these kind of crisscross marks even while it's still wet. You, you, that will make it look like it's knitted or it's got some kind of um, neat like um, pattern to it. You can do all kinds of fun stuff as you're as you're going through these painting processes. If you know if you want yours to look a little bit different than the next person who's doing it, just have fun with with patterns or with the, you know a fun thing that you can do with the brush, and it gives it that you know that look that is all your own. I'm gonna move up to the hat. So I'm picking up again my red and my green on my brush at the same time, allowing for it to kind of. Um, get rid of any of my chalk marks and then I'll just kind of rub it in and see if the color happens that I like or if I want to adjust it any. I think I want a little bit more red on my brush. Just give myself a little bit more red over here and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that face right now. I might just leave it the way that it is. I'll probably let it dry for a minute and see if um, I want to do anything else with that face. Picking up a little more green, just get this hat to kind of disappear in the back here. And I'm trying to avoid losing all of my shadow work too. So these dark areas in the back, I'm making sure that I keep them. I think I want a little bit more darkness underneath that scarf, so I'm picking up a touch more black. So this really um, looks to be in the back and have a little bit of shadow on it, something like that making sure this is as dark as I want, making sure my chalk mark is taken care of. I'm kind of digging the face the way that it is. I don't know if I'm going to do anything more with that, but I do want to add a little bit of brightness over here on the left-hand side, so I washed and dried my brush, picking up a little bit of white to just get a little extra highlight on these edges of the hat, so that will and the scarf so that again that's just going to speak to the brightness of that light source maybe even a little bit on this shoulder in through here so again if you're if you're under um, layer where where we did the um, gray scale wasn't bringing your paint bright enough as you're coming through this final pass here you can always amp it up in the in those little areas that you feel would would make sense like maybe on his little cheek in through here maybe right in through here I can just kind of 
um, add just a little bit in through there just to show the power of that light source. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to hit my, my little person now. I'm going to have the little person wearing some blue clothes. So I'm just picking up some cobalt blue and I'm going to be using that as my glaze of sorts right on top of that um, grayscale painting that I did. And this becomes a very simple process if, if you have a, um, a nice underpainting with some good tonal values. So you, again, I'm just using this as what is referred to as like a glaze on top of it. So it is just colorizing that, um, that piece. I'm going to do the same thing on this scarf. So again, this is just cobalt blue right now. This little front part of the jacket might have some. The hat, I think I might actually put some red on the hat too so it ends up looking like a little purpley as well as maybe the gloves. I'm going to make sure that I'm, I'm taking care of all of my chalk marks. So just adding a little bit more water to my brush to account for that. I'm going to put a little bit of red on my brush to I still have some wet blue right here. I'm gonna make this into like almost like a little purpley color. Red and red and blue makes purple. So I can if I want to have a different little tone in through there. Same thing with his glove in the back. I can put a little bit of red and blue on my brush at the same time. Maybe this will make it stand out a little bit different than the dad's um, jacket. So something like that totally helps. And uh, now I'm gonna pick up a, a little bit of white on my dirty brush in order to give myself a little bit of highlight over on the edge where the um, where the moon is. So again, just white on my on my brush. This is a little hood, so there could be lots of lots of um, poofiness to it. So you can certainly make yours into whatever you want. And of course, you could put a pom pom on the top of this. You could put you know anything that is representational to whatever winter clothing that you want. If you feel you need to amp up any of this, you can certainly add a little bit of lightness in through there. I'm thinking that that's pretty good. Let me just um, make sure that I have this back edge over here. I just put a little more white on my brush. Maybe that uh, shows a little bit more, a little bit more blue. And then I would just, um, at this point, I'd probably step back from it, see if there's any additional lightness or darkness that I want to put on it, but I'm thinking that mine's pretty good. And then we have one more step to go. It's going to be with the small brush. So whenever you get this step done, you can put your medium brush away, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to be using my small brush. I think I'm going to sign it bottom left with, I'm going, um, I'm going to go with uh, cobalt blue to sign my painting today. I like to sign mine with my initials. But you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really cool sentimental Christmas inspired image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.